Welcome to Digital Asset News, the top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets, and break them down to bite-sized pieces. Tonight, we've got some interesting stuff. First up, General Motors CEO says nothing precludes them from accepting Bitcoin if there's consumer demand. So the big story here is that it's not that they're actually going to start accepting Bitcoin, but they would do it, and all we have to do is find a little bit of demand. Take a look at that on top of the fact that billionaire Mark Cuban is getting into DeFi. And this to me is fascinating because for the longest of time, Mark has been doing nothing but talking negatively about cryptocurrency. And all of a sudden, once he starts doing his own research, here he is at the forefront. And finally, some good news. The Ethereum Improvement Proposal EIP-1559 is set to have its first testnet block. And it looks like we could actually be uh, doing these in the next couple of days to where we have a full launch in July. So we'll take a look at what's going on there. Hopefully we can uh, decrease those uh, god-awful Ethereum fees. But first, let's take a look at what's going on in the market. I'm not going to get into this big time, but uh, it's down. Total market cap is down negative 7%, uh, $1.6 trillion. Jerome Powell from the Fed came out and said they're not going to really do too much, not going to raise too many things, and it seems like there's not a big uh, issue. However, I do think they're going to do a lot more uh, money printing. So to me, I see this as, as a bullish uh, symbol anyhow. I think they're going to print more money. I think even though that Jerome can actually say, no, there's, nothing, there's no inflation going on, I think we all know the truth. As we take a look at what's going on for the cost of goods and services, uh, tell me that those aren't going up. So that is what's going on. The, the, uh, the market itself is down a little bit. And just real quick, uh, Bitcoin's at, yeah, it's at 38.6, 2300. So we're down, not massively. Uh, and if you're new to crypto, don't be alarmed by this. Uh, this literally is just <laughs> a Wednesday and it's not a big deal. Let's get into the big stories and see what's gonna go on long-term. So to talk about the big stuff, first of all, this story about General Motors, I find it fascinating that, first of all, the CEO would even talk about it and second of all, that they just, just did not dismiss it like it was some type of, uh, of uh, uh, crazy internet money that no one would ever use. When I got in 2017, that's exactly what it was looked at. It was a very highly speculative uh, asset and people wouldn't even call it an asset. And now here we have CEOs going, yeah, we can get into that. So this is what's going on. This was just released about uh, less than an hour ago. And it states GM will accept Bitcoin if there's demand. And this was actually an interview on CNBC uh, done today. Uh, the CEO is uh, Mary Barra, was asked whether GM will be accepting crypto for payments. She said, there's nothing that precludes us from doing that. We'll be driven by our customers, which is exactly what you should do. If the customers want to pay in Bitcoin or pay in Ethereum or pay in XRP or whatever else it is, why wouldn't you just accept the payment? And that's it. Certainly, we want to make the whole buying and ownership experience as easy as possible. We will follow their lead. And then uh, she's talking about the car salesman, uh, that guy that I don't really talk about too much. And uh, that car salesman from Tesla said uh, this week that Tesla will resume accepting Bitcoin when there's confirmation of reasonable 50% clean energy used by miners with positive future trend. Uh, good luck trying to uh, figure that out and how that actually, uh, you can actually quantify that and actually prove it. I, that's not my job. My job is just to sit here and tell you what's going on in the news. So look, the reason why I talked about this is again, because I just find it, it just blows my mind that just a couple of short years ago, uh, all the big institutions, I mean, you had like a Jamie Dimon, you had a Goldman Sachs, you had a Paul Tudor Jones, you had everybody, you had a Ray Dalio just saying like, this is the dumbest thing and this is just tulip mania. Well, they still say it's tulip mania and it's never going to get off the ground. Then all of a sudden, it's amazing how no one's using Bitcoin and then they say, oh, okay, well, just a few people are using Bitcoin. Oh, okay, well, now it's just for illicit activities. Oh, okay, well, now it's for large institutions, but countries don't use it. And now it's like, oh, well, only small countries like El Salvador uses it. Do you see where we're going with this? And now we've got a, a, a large corporation, global corporation, who was just nonchalantly like, yeah, I mean, we could accept that, why not? So we didn't just get it dismissed. We're actually moving in the right direction. And I kind of see where things are going. The hard part though, is just figuring out about how long it is and can you hang on? And that's why I always cost, talk about dollar cost averaging and just kind of getting into those positions, which leads me to my next point, which a person that I think did the exact same thing that I'm talking about is Mark Cuban. So Mark Cuban, uh, he's on Shark Tank, billionaire, got into the old dot-com era and made a ton of money, good for that guy. 
But uh, his whole thing was, he was saying the exact same thing I just talked about. No one uses Bitcoin. Nobody uses cryptocurrency. It's just tulip mania. It's going to be a bubble. It's going to pop. And now all of a sudden he's like, well, Bitcoin's got its place. And now, of course, after he's done his own research, research and really taking a look at what's going on, all of a sudden he's like, you know what would really uh, do really well? Ethereum, Polygon, Matic. Oh, I invested a ton of Matic and da, 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 da. So here we go. Another example of people when they just do their research and see where things are going, they're like, this does make a lot of sense. So what's going on here? On June 13th, the billionaire investor, co-host of Shark Tank, explained his fascination with DeFi in an editorial published to his blog. And I'm not gonna read the whole thing, it's boring, but really what he stressed about was that yield farming via staking and liquidity, providing are the core features of DeFi. And as far as the economy is concerned, he believes DeFi could be the next great growth engine. And it's not just him, but it's his partner in crime, Kevin O'Leary, Mr. Wonderful, who I actually like. I think he's a pretty entertaining guy. And from what I hear from the, from the team over at Market Rebellion, super nice guy, exact opposite of what you actually uh, see and hear when he's on TV. And he is all about DeFi, but he makes it very mystical. Like it's like this really hard thing to do and it's really tough to, to uh, yield and uh, do, do farming and things like that, but it's not that tough at all. But what he's gonna do is make it uh, very complex so that people will buy his next product because I guarantee he's coming out with one. Anyhow, uh, Cuban says, examples of such, such exchanges that I use are zapper.fi, quickswap.exchange, banker.network, and Uniswap. So that makes me feel good because the same things that I use, this guy's using, and uh, he's only about a couple of years late to the party. <laughs> but whatever, I, I'll, I'll take him as long as he's here. And then to finish up, he says, not for DeFi exchanges, but what makes running a DeFi exchange so much better than a traditional centralized financial business of this and any kind is that rather than the owners of the business, investors and their creditors putting up capital for all the transactions to take place, liquidity providers do everything for them. And he says everything is controlled by smart contracts, fully automated, and pretty much is permissionless and great. And that's what I think we all kind of see coming. And to me, when he gets into the, in this, this whole story about, you know, this is what makes it great, you really kind of have to take a look at what this could actually do. And then his last statement really kind of brings true. He says, uh, he envisions DeFi and crypto as being important global transformation. But he says, if the US doesn't pay attention, the country could miss out on the next great growth engine. And he talks about on the early days of the internet, we foster and support innovation, but it looks like we're doing the exact opposite thing. And that's what he's hoping to get, get away from. So look, Mark Cuban's right. Didn't ever thought I'd say that, but uh, he is correct. If if America just kind of overlooks, first of all, blockchain, uh, they just get rid of that and say, or not get rid of, just overlook it. That's a problem. If they overlook cryptocurrency, digital assets, if they take a look at what could potentially be a great thing as far as decentralized finance, as it becomes a real world global type of thing that is used throughout different countries, not just first world countries, but third world countries, I think we're gonna fall way far behind and we're gonna just be just as bad as China. China, I think, is making a huge mistake with the Bitcoin mining, kicking everybody out, just going with the digital yuans. So they can control everything in their country. But that is up to them. And I'm, for one, happy that they're doing it because uh, I am ecstatic that all these Bitcoin miners are coming to North America and parts of Europe as well. Because, uh, you know, if you don't uh, think, if you think that China is the most open and transparent country out there, then he had another thing coming. And not that America <laughs> is like the greatest uh, like we totally, you know, uh, the, the government is totally transparent, everything else. Don't be naive. Come on, let's be honest. But uh, I'll take America uh, over China as far as like a little bit of transparency, what's going on uh, any day of the week. And I have no problem with the Chinese people, just the Chinese government. That is the problem because they're trying to shut down everything. So DeFi, I think, is a pretty great thing. And I think it's going to lead us into our next piece, which if you're thinking about like what loans can do, what things can do as far as uh, as DeFi. There's a great uh, podcast that it had on Isaiah Jackson, and he's from uh, Bitcoin and Black America. And what he talks about is how not just blockchain, but but DeFi loans, uh, being able to bank the unbanked. This is just in America. Uh, how it can actually help a ton of people, especially in those communities of where Isaiah is talking about. So if we see something like that can actually like help these things, so much the better. Now, let's just extrapolate that from America and take that out to India, where 
the banks aren't going to India that much, especially in the very poor sectors, especially in sub-Saharan Africa. So if you can get into those areas and do decentralized finance, because the banks aren't coming, then you can actually bring everybody into a world inclusion. So Bitcoin is great and everything else, but I think there has to be a DeFi, uh, Ethereum, an Avalanche, a Matic, a Solana, or Cardano, something else that can actually come in there and provide decentralized or DeFi. Also, uh, speaking of Unstoppable Domains, I want to say thanks to Unstoppable for uh, supporting the channel. This is a paid promotion on my channel. And it, as you know, on my channel, I don't do very many paid promotions. This will be the third one so far. We've done uh, iTrust Capital, Crypto Trader for Tax Services, and now Unstoppable Domains. So Unstoppable Domains, thank you so much. Very appreciate it. Just so you know, every dollar that you spent over at Unstoppable Domains to purchase any type of blockchain domain, you'll actually get $3 in credit. So uh, $1 equals three, $100 equals $300. And all the domains uh, that they have, you can, a ton of different ones as far as like .crypto and .zill. And they're also going to offer more types of domains that end with .x, .wallet, .blockchain, .bitcoin, .dow, .coin. And those will be coming by tomorrow. And then also for that offer for the uh, $1 for three, that's actually going on for the next 15 hours, just so you know. So by uh, tomorrow, that will be over. And then lastly, I just want to make mention of... Uh, Congratulations to Unstoppable Domains because the domain that you build now, they have natively supported for Brave and Opera. So there's no different extension like you would need for like a Google Chrome or Firefox or Edge or whatever. Uh, it'll actually just work in those browsers. So for Unstoppable Domains and grab your own crypto domain, there's a link in the description. Just sign up with them and that will do it. So again, thanks to Unstoppable Domains. Let's finish up on our last piece. So last piece, Ethereum Improvement Proposal, EIP-5059, to have the first testnet block. So if you're not familiar with 5059, all it's going to do is it's going to reduce gas fees. Do it does it in a number of certain ways. One of the things that's interesting is that it's it could actually slow down a little bit uh, for the transactions. But if you want to speed up your transactions, all you have to do is just, there's going to be some way for you to tip the miner to increase uh, the speed, which that uh, would work with uh, <laughs> Uber. But uh, that is essentially what's going on in a nutshell. Me, personally, I was a little bit skeptical because the Ethereum Foundation has sometimes not missed or has kind of missed their marks, but it looks like they're uh, right on time. So the much-awaited fee-burning upgrade of the Ethereum network known as EI559 set to have its first testnet block on 24th of June. So we're looking at 16th of June, so not too far away, about a little bit more than a week. The new development was passed across by the Ethereum 1.0 coordinator, Tim Baiko. I think I said that right. Tim Baiko said this, with all clients comfortable with their 1559 implementation, we agreed it made sense to set testnet blocks now. Some of the JSON RPC changes mentioned at the beginning of May come after the testnet forks, but all the consensus related changes for 1559 are ready to go. That to me is amazing. I did not think they would make it. I thought there would be a lot more uh, internal grumbling and rumbling and people would just drag their feet. But it looks like they're just going to move forward. And uh, for whatever the miners uh, may have said that they were going to uh, stage a protest, looks like it didn't happen. So moving down to finish this up, all the forks mentioned above are test nets. And here are all the different events and the time dates. So you're looking at July, June 24th, June 30th, July 7th. But those are all, all test nets. This implies that they emulate the live Ethereum network but they're only meant to test in order to know how the, might, the um, uh, upgrade would perform on the mainnet itself. Considering previous reports, it's been estimated the upgrade will go live by the end of July. However, when it's deployed, whether July or August, depends on the outcome of, of course, the test net. So this, to me, is positive news. And if they can do these things, if they can reduce the fees, but keep the transactions at near or maybe a little bit faster with the tipping, I mean, that would be great. I think the real question would be how much and how often would you have to tip uh, the miners to actually make it a worthwhile or a quick enough transaction? Because if you need to go global and you're trying to service everything that people are doing, you can't just keep doing that. You can't just go, well, just tip them and then it'll, it'll be fast enough or just tip this or tip that. It has to be things, people want things now, they want things fast, they want things cheap. So I think this is just the first step to what will eventually happen is hopefully E2.0 will come down the pipe and we'll see how that all works. Again, 
I hold uh, Bitcoin, I hold Ethereum, I hold Avalanche, I hold a bunch of Cardano. And uh, so when people say, ah, oh, you're really against Ethereum, I'm not against Ethereum. I don't care which one wins. I got them both. So uh, I'm rooting for both. Hopefully they both win. I don't really, it doesn't really matter to me. I'm just an investor. And that's uh, really all we got for tonight. So first of all, thanks for watching all the way to the end. I appreciate it. If you like that video, give it a thumbs up. Also consider subscribing. A lot of things we talk about on this channel are very time sensitive. Over on Dan Clips, we do a lot more things as far as like the advancements in cryptocurrency and the new projects that are going on. Uh, we just took a look at the uh, Cardano ecosystem. We took a look at the Indigo protocol for synthetic assets, Charlie for the Cardano Oracle and World Mobile Token. Uh, to get uh, interoperability, digital ID in Sub-Saharan Africa. And finally, we also took a look at Card Starter. So check those out over at the other channel, Dan Clips. That's uh, links in the description. That's it for tonight. Thanks so much. See you on the next one.